Good morning, Church One. This is a first for me. I'm sure it's a first for you. Here we are in our sanctuary all alone, but we thought that this would be a good place to meet with you and to connect with you. We want you to know, first and foremost, that our prayers are for you, and we as a church are continuing to look for ways that we can support you, serve you, and uh, we hope that even in some small way, this video message for our Sunday morning will do that. Just in terms of basic function, it's important for you to know that the single best way we can connect with you is via email and through our website. The website, obviously, if you're watching this, I'm guessing you know the website, but it's churchone.us. And if you are not receiving at this point, if you have not been receiving devotional emails from us over the course of this week, it's probably a good sign that we don't have you on our email list. And if you want to be added to that, you can simply email Ed DeYoung at uh, islandvalet at me.com, which is a terrible email address. We all know that. Island Valet, I S L A N D V A L E T at me.com. That's Ed's email. And you can, uh, he can place you on the list. We've been sending out, I think we've sent out three or four devotionals up until up, up in this point. In addition to that, we have all the overseers' contact emails on that if you need to reach them. It really is our hope to be some form of resource to you in the midst of this. We know there are many different issues and many many things, but we want to be your church, and we can t consider it an honor to be your church. And so if, we c if you're not connecting with us, those are the best ways that we can connect with you. This has been a profoundly fluid situation, hasn't it? Uh, day by day, uh, things change, our responses change, what, what we should expect is changing. I know even from this time last week, uh, what, I, what I thought was going to be happening and what's happening has been different. And in fluid situations, it's easy to feel like you can drift. I know I have found myself drifting often. And so what I thought I'd start off and share with you is what have become to me little anchor verses for right now. Um, I've really been asking God to show me um, more and more like things, truths that I can hold on to in the midst of the storm. These two verses have been helpful to me and I share them for you and I hope they are for you as well. The first one is John chapter 16, verse 33, when Jesus, speaking in the context of the cross, said this, I have said these things to you so that in me you may have hope. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. That promise that in me you may have hope has been a real anchor thought for me as I've struggled at times um, to find hope and remembering that ultimately all of our hopes are anchored in Jesus Christ, in his life, his death, his resurrection, his grace, his mercy, and all of that, that at some level in him and him alone do we find our hope and then I appreciate so much Jesus' just really strong admonition to take heart, that this is an active thing. This truth that in him we have hope is something that we have to continue to pull on and take and grab and not just, it's not just going to seep into you. And so I have used this verse many times just to remind myself to take heart. And I encourage you to take heart in the midst of whatever struggles you find yourself in. Psalm 94 verses 18 to 19 has also been a real source of comfort to me. Jesus, uh, this is the psalmist writing, this isn't Jesus writing, but it said, When I thought my foot was slipping, your steadfast love, O Lord, held me up. When the cares of my heart are many, your consolations cheer my soul. I found great comfort in that verse and I found great, um, a great anchor in that verse uh, for two reasons. The first is this idea of slipping. Um, I know for me very often my, um, my best moments are followed by my worst moments in terms of this, this season we're in. And there are times where I frankly slip. I come home, um, I'm, I'm anxious or I'm, I'm at home, I'm wondering how my kids are doing 
keep trying to keep them busy, all the dynamics of, of all that for me sometimes just overwhelms me and I find myself slipping. And I just appreciated so much the honesty of the psalmist, you know, when I thought I was slipping. And I, and I think it's probably good for us to be honest sometimes when we feel ourselves slipping. But then I love how he ends this, this little snippet by saying, when the cares of my heart are many, and we all probably have many cares right now, your consolations bring me joy. Your consolations, Lord. This idea of consolation, um, it's an interesting word. We don't use it a lot anymore. I, don't, I had to kind of go back and look it up. Um, I was reminded the one place I used to hear it, and I hate to rub it in for all of you college basketball fans, but the one place that I used to hear it uh, was when I was younger in the NCAA championships for basketball, uh, they would play the semifinals, and then uh, the two winners would obviously advance to the final. But, but back, uh, again, when I was growing up, before the final, the two losers of the semifinal games played in what they called a consolation game. And the word uh, consolation actually comes from a, a, group of, a group of words, that one of it means after the loss. And uh, it's something that happens after the loss. And I, I love that image uh, of God's grace to us, even after the slipping and after the loss. Um, God can lift our hearts. And you're gonna need to give yourself a whole lot of grace. I read a great article this week uh, by a nun who has been kind of in a I don't, I don't know what they call it, wherever, wherever nuns live. Um, I, I got a lot on my mind these days and I can't remember that one, but wherever nuns live, she's, she's been living there for 27 years and she wrote this article in a New Jersey newspaper that basically said, I've been practicing social distancing for 27 years. I might have some good insights to people. And it was actually a really good um, article. Um, she had some really practical things about building yourself some structure, um, learning to rest, all those kind of things. But one of the things she said at the end, is she said that there, there is a reality of being somewhat disconnected um, and, 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 and particularly in anxious times, you, you're gonna face uh, dark sides of you and you're gonna have to come to grips with parts of you that are a challenge and you're gonna experience that. And, and I love the idea um, of the consolations of God. And I just invite you into that right now. I invite you into experiencing um, the consolation, the grace of God. God's mercies are new every morning and great is his faithfulness. So those have been anchor verses for me, at least in my journey thus far. Again, this is a fluid situation. This time next week, we could be speaking to you, if we, if we do speak to you this way, uh, in a totally different format or framework. But I think as I've tried to dialogue with many of you over the course of the week and kind of keyed into my own experiences, I think that those ideas of hope and grace have really um, been important for me and I think for many others. So I share them with you. Um, but I want to leave with just sharing you, sharing this with you. In any crisis or challenge, uh, one of the most important things is connecting resource to need. Uh, I would argue right now our culture is undergoing that, that very issue right now as our government authorities and all that are in charge are trying to figure out and trying to find ways to connect the resources of healing to the need of this uh, disease, uh, particularly as it continues to mount. That's one of the big reasons that um, we're all practicing social distancing and all that stuff is to give our, our, our system the time to collect resources to meet the needs. Well, in the same way, um, we've got to figure out a way to connect the resources of God's grace to your needs right now. And it's interesting, we are in Lent, which is fascinating to me that this all, uh, this experience, I know Shannon wrote that in her devotional, how interest connecting Lent to this journey we're on. But it's interesting to me that as a church, we had chosen over Lent to revisit our values. Um, and, and it seems interesting to me that, um, that, that we would maybe stop and ponder those a little bit more. I was talking to Renee yesterday 
and Renee made the comment that she's kind of more committed to our values now than more than ever as she's seeing them work themselves out. And I would agree. I think the values um, that we have here at Church One are great resources for us to call on. Um, it's interesting to me that the last sermon that I preached here, that we preached here together when we gathered, was on the value of Sabbath, stopping, resting, delighting, contemplating, and I just want to say I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I didn't mean it that much, God. We didn't need this much of a Sabbath, but I think we're all experiencing the stopping, but uh, I would encourage you to continue to rest, delight, and contemplate the best that you can. We also value service, and we're all in this time together where we are in many ways serving our community and in some senses serving those who are most vulnerable by social distancing and causing great sacrifice for us and our daily lives and all of that. But we, we, we value that, and we recognize that in serving, we sort of elevate Jesus. We also do believe that there is great value in the scriptures that's one of the reasons that we're doing this this morning is that we think that it matters to you. This is why we're sending you out devotionals and those kind of things because we recognize the tremendous value um, in, in Scripture. Because we, not only do we believe that Scripture is the authoritative word of God, but we also believe that it is a means by which you can get the words from God. In times of uncertainty, um, one of the things that you... Uh, want so desperately is to know. You want to know more. You want to have answers. And I fully understand that. But I think it's interesting to think about sort of the quest for truth and how we get answers. And one of the, Pope John Paul II taught on this a while ago, and I'm going to make a little illustration here for you, and this is going to not be great, but um, he talked about the idea of reason and faith. And very often we pit those two things together. We pit reason and faith. And reason is things like science and good logic and good thinking and good information. And faith often seems to be, you know, the next world and all that kind of stuff. But Pope John Paul, I think, rightly taught that reason and faith are both wings on the same plane. This is my paper airplane. And that very often, you, what you need is you need the air to come under both wings. And right now, we're in a season, as we live in uncertainty, that we're, we're craving good information, we want our doctors to know what's going on, and all that stuff, and all of that matters. Get the best information you can, act in the most reasonable way you can, in thoughtful way, I think it's important. But the only problem is that if the, the air is only coming up over the re, under the reason wing, your plane does start to tilt. You also need faith. You also need to be reminded of those eternal truths, of the love of God, of the things that you can only receive by faith as you hear from God. And scripture is the means, the, the air beneath the wing of faith. And so I just continue to encourage you to expose yourself to scripture, to be looking like uh, for anchor verses and things to hold on to to open yourself up to teaching from all over the place. Renee sent me a great link from Tim Keller. Um, there's so much, there's a lot of good information out there. There's gonna be, um, I've heard of Zoom connections within our church of people doing Bible studies and stuff like that. And I encourage you to try to find a way to, to not only as we're seeking good information out there, to continue to build your faith because those two things together will get us to that, that place of truth that we want and long for. So scripture is a great resource. Spiritual friendships um, are really important. We can practice friendships. One of the great things about um, being in a small church like we are is we really have the capacity to contact each other. I have um, this week, um, decided, I, as I, I scrambled to figure out um, all sorts of ways that we're going to connect, uh, I began to just call people and talk. And I found um, great value in, um, in just talking and connecting with people. 
And I would really encourage you to practice the art of spiritual friendship as a church by checking in. And one of the greatest things that I think that you can do right now, one of the things that I have found and have um, struggled at sometimes and sometimes done a good job is when I call, uh, put myself in a listening posture. Instead of just calling to dump, um, you know, call, and, and when, it's my, when I'm the one calling to check in, say, hey man, just, just want to listen, what's going on? And not try to answer anything, just try to listen and hear and connect. And we really um, would encourage you to do the same, to practice the, the value of spiritual friendship. And lastly, uh, spiritual practices, we believe in them. Uh, again, it's one of the reasons we're doing this. We believe that there's, even, even though we can't gather officially, the, the practice of maybe gathering digitally or remotely can in, in some way be a resource to you. Uh, again, that, that article by the nun that I, I read mentioned the, the power of routines in this time of when everything is disconnected to, to kind of rebuilding routines. And I think that there may be something to that. Um, and maybe in a short time, you're gonna have to rebuild some spiritual practices. Maybe commit to, to praying uh, before you go to bed, turning off the TV, um, spending a few minutes praying before you go to bed. I know this week I found myself I'm struggling a little bit and um, began walking and I'm thankful I'm healthy right now and if, if you're healthy I would just make myself go for a walk and I would pray and I would pray the Our Father as I as I went for a walk and it was a, a trend, tremendous way for me to just sort of remember God because my brain was spinning all out of, out of control and that can be a great spirit little spiritual practice I know for my devotional, I sent you a, a format of Lectio Divina, which is sort of a reflective way of reading small snippets of God's word, and that could maybe be a good spiritual practice. The great thing about spiritual practices, is there's, there's as many spiritual practices as there are you. And my ideas may not work for you, but my encouragement to you would be to, to practice this value of, of spiritual practice and finding some things that, that help center you on God. Would you please receive all this stuff as an invitation? Um, this is just simply our way of, of trying to offer you some help. Um, you know, this is, again, a, ch a challenging time, but we believe that, that Jesus and his words, that in him we may have hope and that we can take heart for he has overcome the world. And, and it is that hope that propels us to just encourage you to say, take heart, church one. Uh, we're in this together. We're going to get through this together. Uh, we can be the light of Christ in the midst of a challenging situation. Um, may, may God be with you. May he bless you. And we long to be together again in this place. Amen.